folks, and welcome to a new playthrough of King's Quest. And I wanted to do this. Um, I I knew I was going to play this at some point. Um, yes. There are five chapters in the game. I I really just like the first chapter. It's very lighthearted. It's it's um, easy. Chapter 2 is more dark and yuck. Third one, they get harder and harder. And um, I got as far as into Chapter 4. I couldn't get any farther than that, folks. And so I had to watch it watch play through all the way through Chapter 5. Very depressing ending, and I really didn't like it. But um, first chapter is so much fun, though. I love it. Um, it's very lighthearted. It just goes downhill from there in terms of the seriousness and darkness of the uh, whole thing. The reason why I want to play this is because I heard on the internet today that Christopher Lloyd died. And Christopher Lloyd voices the main character of the game. So let's play the game that Christopher Lloyd played. So there's five chapters. Night to remember, the rubble without a cause, once upon a climb, snow place like home, and the good night. Alright. So let's go. And the way I'm gonna play the game isn't the only way you have to play the game. There's several ways you can it by each chapter. It just plays out differently in the other chapters. Alright, it's been a while since I've done this. Okay. Alright, so this is one of those puzzle kind of games I have to get over here where can actually operate the thing. Now we can go down. Yay! I have not been back there in years, but it was the last place left to look. I don't know if you can hear Christopher Lloyd's voice there, I'm going to turn his volume up a little bit. There, let's see if y'all can hear it a little bit better now. Okay, I guess we are getting through, maybe? It was not exactly as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. Ah, oh, so I've been here before, huh? Around and around. Look at these graphics from 2015 to 2016. These are PS3 graphics. Two. Odd contraptions guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. Now, I don't remember this. One of these gets you through, the other one kills you. I decided this was no time to take a nap, even though that bed looked very squishy and very comfortable. Alright, so I guess we do this. All right. Okay, well, I didn't die. Whoa. Crap.
I don't remember waking him up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? We haven't got that, Gwendolyn. No worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Where am I? Now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Okay. Beneath a slumbering pile of teeth and claws was... Fable Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. Do you want to tell this part? Yes! King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to add a shinier hat to my collection. I wasn't planning on doing an LP on this, it's just on the whim. I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. Well, that's not good. Even though the bed was very comfortable, this was no time to hide under the covers. Sounds good, though. Well, As I was that. saying, <clears throat> this was no time to take a nap. Oh, sorry, Bob. Where's your handle? So, the missing jokes. handle was booby-trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. Um, where do I go, where do yeah, I go? I used my cleverness to hide. Dragon's half blind. Nice. <laughs> Luckily, that half blinded beast never noticed me in bed. A dragon's eye must be really hard to pierce with an arrow. At archery lessons, I can barely hit a hay bale. It is indeed a, a feat only for skilled archers. Volumes of old books with foreboding titles clutter the shelves of that strange bedroom. How to tame a dragon, breaking the spirit of hideous beasts, amateur spells to impress your friends with. <laughs> no books about recovering missing handles, though. All right, well, I guess I got what I came for. So now we can go back upstairs. I tried to turn that crazy contraption, oh, yeah. but it was it's missing a handle. Someone tapped with it, button. creating some silly conundrum. What did you use to fix the broken switch? No. I hit the square button. Now it's my menu. Dragon would have recognized that one. The dragon's chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall.
After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day too, if Amira was my only friend. All right, this game cannot die, but you have to beware. That's it's got spikes and it can kill you. I'm dead. Wait a minute. Does this mean our family's immortal? Better believe we're immortal. I have to go around the outside. I forgot where to walk. I can't see too well. I got to go to her bed. around it. Wait a minute. I don't see a Nice. I don't see a path way around this. I know I gotta get under the bed. Alright, you go back to sleep now, Mr. Dragon. here anyway. If we were to play chapters two and three we'd find out, but I'm not going to. The original PS3 version of what? Whoever designed this trap uh, thought we'll they were pretty clever, but I would probably find a way to it. hit that on Reachable switch. Okay. Ooh. Why does he look sad? Looks resolute. Skeleton of armor. Problem. 
the mirror called out to me. All right, so I can never remember. Okay, so what you have to do, I'm trying to remember how to do this myself. You have to get the dragon to the other side. Basically, a ridiculous feeding contraption was cobbled together to keep the beast and probably its owner alive. Okay, so that's gonna go. We don't want that there. So. first played this game, it took me forever to figure that out. Back in like 2015 or whatever it was. When you get out of there. Look, this is cutscene, so I don't have to worry about this. Okay. Alright, now, now, now I'm controlling you. Follow um, button prompts. Now fast enough. Okay, got to do that one. That. I guess you could say. All right. <laughs> I missed it. What the I heck? Could... <laughs> All right. I guess Hold you... on a sec. Well, we're not that bad at this, folks. <laughs> I missed. I missed. I guess okay. you say. I think you get a little tries with this. <laughs> there we go. Phew. I get my hat. Yay.
With the magic mirror safely in my possession, I dreamt of the Daventry I would be rewarded with, and the kingdom it could become. All right. In that split second, I had three choices in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety, and all would have rippling consequences. I could kill the dragon. I'm gonna scare it. I'm gonna go ahead and set it free. Set the dragon free, yay. Now you can do either any and all of those, do whatever you want. As far as chapter one is concerned, um doesn't matter. Now there's the magic mirror that we rescued. My hands were shaking and my arms could barely grip the rope. But with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. I hope this old cap will be remembered for far more than the action tattered across its brim, sewn into the seams of many hidden adventures. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like... Why did you set the dragon free, even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home, but only to my stuffed bunnies. I've uh -huh. always found it best to pursue friends where I can, though they don't always feel the same about me. All right, you two. Grandpa needs to rest. Gwendolyn, it's way past your bedtime. Sleep well, Grandpa. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I don't need rest. I'm as spry as I've ever been, though I wouldn't mind a slice of magic fruit. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where to cut this off at. How to cut it off. So see how she said you're free. Well, then hello, cousin. You could just kill it. <laughs> I'm so glad you you're finally here. He's been, He's been asking, asking about you for days. I had to sit through the same story five times. We got here as fast as we could. And I like Grandpa stories, especially the ones with dragons. Ah, yes, the legendary beast that he set free. I don't know if he forgets I've heard that story before or he doesn't care, but he loves telling it to anyone that will listen. I'm pretty sure I heard the nursemaids telling his same jokes in the hall. Have you heard anything the doctors are saying? Yes. Doctors, wizards, magic elves. Grandfather is fine, Gwendolyn. 
they all say the same thing. He's just old. He still has a few good years left. Look, we're all excited that your family made the trip, but there's no need to worry. You should get some rest. I'm sure you're scheduled for a full morning of Grandfather's hilarious ramblings. Oh, I'm also scheduled for the tournament tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes, the fencing tournament. You'll love it. I'm, of course, favored to win and will make sure you have the very best seat to view my victory. The courtyard will be filled with important people and delicious hors d'oeuvres. Oh, um, I'm actually competing in the tournament. Hmm. I had no idea we were hosting a junior tournament. That's incredible. In that case, I will gladly be there to cheer you on and eat delectable appetizers. Nope. No junior tournament. I'll be squaring off against you. I see. Well, perhaps this is the time to stop listening to stories and finally make some of your own. Good night, Gwendolyn. Sleep well. You know, that's actually a good point he makes there. Let's hear some more stories. Come in, Gwendolyn. You can set those on the nightstand. Grandma said to take three spoonfuls of each. I'll get to those. No need to fuss over me. Now, let's talk about far more important issues. Like that fencing tournament. I hear you're competing. Well, I signed up, but I'm not so sure anymore. Nonsense. If it's Scott you're worried about, he's no bother. After all, I only learned that you entered after he complained about it all morning. Threatened, I'm guessing. There are many ways to win a duel. I, for one, have always been fond of... A death maneuver, an act of kindness, even in victory, or a quick wit of distraction. That's... No. Thinking of a problem in a different way, and finding a clever distraction to create a moment of victory. <clears throat> Speaking of, that reminds me of a story, one I know you haven't heard before. When I was a much younger lad, before I was a knight, before I'd been to Daventry, and even before I'd seen a dragon. It's a tale about a tournament that changed my life. It is a long story, but I shall tell it briefly. Well, Triumph, this looks as good a place as any to camp for the night. Let's rest up. We have a big day tomorrow. All right, well, this is Steve Triumph. Oh, yeah, I get to move inside a few times. Boy, the rocks. Oh, I get to shoot. Oh, I hit two trees. All right. After gracefully repelling down the cliff, I welcome the sight of an actual road, the first sign of civilization. Okay, so we're going to start down this road of civilization next time on Chapter 1 of King's Quest.